I, I was told specifically what to do, and I haven't done any of it yet. So I just want to welcome Mark. Thank you all. You know, welcome, welcome, welcome. And that was the Sylvester World joke. Um, oh, okay. Thank you. I can bail out now. Um, is Joanne here? Where did Joanne go? Yeah. Just, oh, you're right there. You were over there a second ago. Right. No, that's okay. And you moved your car. <laughs> yes, an opportunity for public shaming. Welcome to the Yankee experience. <laughs> um, Joanne Marquesi, is that your question? Marquesi. I don't know if I'm going to call it, so I'm going to call it without the open. Joanne Marquesi is here. She is the new president of Cooley Dickinson Hospital. And then, first, I would like you to uh, recognize that with some applause. Would you like to speak a little bit? Oh, sure, I didn't have to. Oh, you don't have to. You don't have to. I'm just offering you the opportunity and, and trying to bail out of me talking. So. Yeah. Um, first of all, thank you all for coming. It's really incredible to have the support of this community. I've worked in other community hospitals and I've never seen anything like the relationship between the community and the community. Um, particularly, it is true. I think the emergency department is an incredibly important resource, I think. And it's the front door to the hospital. It's what most people think of when they think of us. And um, we're glad to have so many talented people, but we also think we want to make it better. And we'll particularly ensure that when you come there, you spend less time there. Because we know really people want to spend as little time there. So that's a big project for this year, is to make our um, flow better so that when you come in, you get out of bed. Um, but still maintain a great quality here and a great service. So um, can I pay special tribute to the one person I knew in North Hampton before I moved here, Lisa Baskin. So for those of you who don't know, Lisa actually knew me when I was a very young child. Um, and so she has been terrific support in my meeting here. And it's been great now to, um, I think I now know the time of some people, so she's not the area of that. So again, thank you. Thank you for all your support. And what I tell all groups is that as great as we are, we can get better. And what's most that we need from our supporters and friends is not only for you to tell us when we do well, but tell us when we don't do really well so we can improve. And we won't, hopefully we won't respond defensively or be upset. It's the only way we can get better is when people tell us where they didn't have the best services. So we are committed to continue to improve. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lisa Baskin and I are unindicted co-conspirators. <laughs> I want to acknowledge this table here, and in 2002, I don't think everyone knows them, but we, this, is, this is the city side of, of emergency services. You have the Ambulance Corps, the Rescue Service here, uh, represented in the, in the guidance of the course of uh, Deputy Chief Norris, who is here. And this, that is the other part of, the other dimension of emergency services in the community that's often not recognized. It goes, it's actually taken for granted, and maybe that's a good thing. Maybe the fact that everyone presumes that there's going to be a fully staffed, fully trained paramedic force showing up at any incident in your home and having you delivered to the emergency services, uh, you know, ready to go and be taken care of, that's... That's a luxury that many communities don't know and experience in Northampton. Again, I hope that you would be able to uh, afford some applause for these gentlemen right here. So next up, I'm going to introduce a colleague. Uh, she has a personal story to tell. Uh, Marianne Labarge, again, of course, this is, I, I don't know why I'm supposed to introduce Marianne Labarge. I think that's not, you know, as, I said, as I've said in the past, that there are people who literally contemplate getting a restraining order against Marianne because she comes to their house every two days just to make sure everything's okay. And they say, oh, it's Marianne, quick. Turn off the lights, drop to the floor. I'm going to ask you to do something. Uh, Marianne actually did drop to the floor in a rather uh, horrible experience that she's going to uh, relate to you about her personal experiences with all the services that we just described and how grateful she is to be where she is today, which is actually here. So Marianne Labarge, Council Marianne Labarge, Council Award 6, the institution of this award, Marianne Labarge. Thank you, Bill. Um, this is 
is not easy for me. I find it quite difficult. On February 13th, I was out shoveling my desk. My husband was still in the driveway with my son and making paths for our chocolate lab. He's very hard to get it. I think it's a lot of nursing care from our family. My little girl, Kareem, loves to shovel. Her and I were on the deck, and I was almost done with it. As the city councilor bill is corrupt, I have plans every day, and I have plans once I finish was to clear off the fire hydrants on West Stanton Road. And I now have residents that are trained that are helping me to do that. And then after that, I go to Valgo Road and check on my elderly. On Acrebrook Drive, on Brookside Circle, everything went down the drain. It didn't happen. For some reason, when I was on top part of the deck, not realizing that there was ice that was covered with snow. I don't remember anything from then on, except for my husband came in the house for a crash, and he heard my little girl, who is Celine, sitting beside the side of my head and barking and barking. And it was not a regular bark. My husband said it was a her bark. I did not take my side. I do not remember my husband talking to me. He said, when he came out on the deck, I was saying, someone please help me. Someone please help me. I don't remember that. I do not remember him bringing me in the house. And for some reason, early that morning, I never wear a, a cap on my head. And I said to my husband, I think I'll put on my black woolen cap and put my hood on. And he said, I think you should. And thank God today that I did at least have that woolen cap on underneath my foot. He said, when he brought me in, he had taken off the cap and the hood. He looked at the back of my head and he said, you are hurt very badly and you need to go to the emergency room. I don't remember anything. I do not remember him putting me in the car. The only thing I do remember is the sound of doors. That's the only thing I could recall was the sound of doors. And apparently that was the sliding doors to the emergency room in the cool deck. The old, the, I don't remember the girl at the desk. I cannot even say what she looked like. I don't remember anything about my medical card. That's all I know is that I was in a room. And I remember light, like flashlights going in my eyes, and I don't remember anyone, anybody at all. And I don't know if you can remember anyone, just a bad The only thing I remember is coming out of the, the cat scan room, and there was Dr. Tom Wiles. And I remember his face because being on the fire committee several, several years ago, we worked with him very, very closely. And I have to say that I have the best of care in the emergency room. I am very lucky because sometimes people with head injuries, concussions, end up in really deep trouble. And I knew that somehow, somewhere, that little angel was beside me to say, now, now, you know, you're going to be okay. And I have a job to do, and that's to take care of my elderly, our fire department who comes on my ward, they saved an elderly person's life about three, four years ago. I don't forget this type of stuff. So we all have a job to do. But I have to say, life is very, very precious, very precious. And I'm able to talk about it. I have a friend who had a head injury also, and a very simple injury, not like the one I had, and never came out of a coma. So, I want to thank the Cooley Dixon Hospital for all the precious care. And my little Cooley, after a little later on, thanking the Cooley Dixon for taking care of me. You were great to my husband. My son was pretty well shook up. But I want to thank you for really giving me that precious care. 
And it, it's not easy now. I have headaches. I'm coping with them. They were terrible for almost three months. The concentration part of it sometimes is a little difficult, but I'm able to catch myself when I want to speak. So it all takes time. But thank you, Dr. Conway. Thank you to the fire department for all the best of care that any resident here gets in the city of Northampton and all the employees at Cleveland in the emergency room. Thank you. And I'd like to introduce Dr. Conway. Uh, thanks, Bill. only gave me three minutes, which is really not enough time for me. Uh, but before I start, it's a team, uh, EMS, the emergency department, the hospital, uh, for the team, and I'd like to introduce the other part of the team, from the ED, Jenna Koshik, who's the, the director of the ED, and Lorena Joe, who is the clinical educator. <laughs> Family Advisory Council and also as a volunteer has done lots and lots of work for us. <laughs> so Marilyn asked me to talk just a little bit about the relationship between the hospital and the city of Northampton, the greater Northampton area. And again, I only have three minutes, so I'll make it fast and I'll talk fast. No, this is actually <laughs> this goes back to actually April of 1885 when the charter of Blue Dickinson was created. The hospital opened the first of January 1886. We've had a close relationship city of Northampton, the greater Northampton area since then. As a matter of fact, in the early part of the 20th century, the city of Northampton built a chronic and contagious disease hospital on the hospital property, uh, where a parking lot is now, and the hospital ran that. It then became uh, an area for civil defense and civil defense storage until it was torn down. So we do, we do go back a long way. Uh, back in the late 80s, uh, 1989, the hospital of the city of Northampton and Northampton Ambulance Service, which is a private service back then, formed the first non-hospital based uh, triumvirate uh, paramedic service in, in the country. It was a three-way uh, deal between the city of Northampton, between the ambulance service, and between the hospital. Uh, that service provided paramedic level service to the entire Cooley Dickinson Hospital area. They went out to the surrounding towns and cities to deliver paramedic care. On the basis of that, it became apparent that paramedic level service was needed in the greater Blue Dickinson Hospital area. And we got together with various ambulance services, and over the ensuing 15 years, created paramedic level services in the greater Blue Dickinson area. Uh, Northampton Fire Department is a great example of that. Uh, first, we had them trained in defibrillation. They became first responders and went out to patients in Northampton with cardiac arrest. We then uh, helped them develop a basic ambulance service, and the basic ambulance service subsequently became one of the best paramedic level fire department ambulance services, in my opinion, in the country. Uh, and we can thank Chris Norris and the fire department for their involvement in that. I think the EMS service that provides paramedic level care for Northampton and for the entire region is one of the best in the country. So, uh, hopefully you won't need us or you won't need our services, but be aware, if you do need us, we're there, and it is a team. It's EMS, it's the hospital, the nursing staff, and we're there for you. So thank you very much. Well, I'm supposed to acknowledge uh, one of the dignitaries. Actually, I missed some of the dignitaries, and maybe I will go into that right now. Of course, we have Council Marianne Lavarge. I don't know if you noticed that she was here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we have the Council from Ward 4, Julie Shara, over there. We have uh, Council Emeritus Jim Dostal over here. Actually, I've been in every formal capacity in every office and every department in the city of Northampton at some point in the time. So, Bill, <laughs> if I may, I would like to say something also. Sure. Well, I, 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 any opportunity to give this up, I'm going to <laughs> yeah, One of the things I want to say, uh, Dr. Conway, thanks. Um, you've been a, a real factor in this. But what the people don't realize is when this ambulance service was formed, I happen to be chairman of the uh, 
Public Safety Committee. And at that time, we were in a budget crisis. The Florence Fire Station was to be closed. And the fire department came up with a plan to keep their personnel, start an ambulance service, and keep the Florence Fire Station open. And they've done that. And they've done a yeoman's job at that. And as Dr. Conway said, we plan to have the best ambulance service in the country. And I believe we have. Thank you. Amen. Um, and, and actually, I mean, I, to emphasize critical care, obviously, critical response is just that. With you know, minutes literally count. Um, the difference between a five-minute response and a thirty or twenty or twenty-minute response is, could be the difference between life and death, or long-term disability, and a quick recovery. And, and uh, you know, we really, truly are blessed. And, and it's, it's, I mean, maybe it's a blessing that we get to take for granted, but I think every now and then we should fall back and consider about what it is that we enjoy here in this community, that we are truly gifted. And it wasn't by accident. It was by design of very conscientious people working. And, and, that, and what Jim was describing came up from the rank and file. That was the rank and file uh, recommendation for expanded services. And as he pointed out, it's an enormous success, and we've all benefited. So, um, I believe next up, excuse me, I was my password here. The uh, uh, oh, <laughs> you know, I forgot, Chris. You know, you got to give the speech in public, so I, I, was, I didn't know that I was going to take some of your thunder here. So, uh, Deputy Chief Chris Norris is here. He's the of the EMS department. He has a few words to say. Probably, he's probably not going to brag. So I, I, I'm glad that Jim and I took the opportunity to do that. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I I know many of you here this afternoon, but again, uh, my name is Chris Norris. Um, one of the members of the Northampton Body Department. And this afternoon, uh, we also have Dustin Fulmer here, uh, who is one of our senior paramedics, and Jonathan Van Land, who is one of our senior paramedics as well. They're both stationed out of the Florence Station. Um, as you heard earlier, back in 1998, the fire department started uh, taking a more active role in EMS here in the community. Um, we started uh, deploying the engines at the first responder level with capabilities of defibrillation. And then uh, at that same time, we were working in collaboration with the private ambulance company. It was around 2004 when we started working with um, the mayor, the city council, the local union, and the hospital to start to develop a backup plan for ambulance transport capabilities. We got the ambulance license at the basic level, and then a year later we moved up to the intermediate level, and then in January 1st of 2006, uh, we got our paramedic level license uh, through the state of Mass. Today, um, right now, for the city of Northampton, we have five ambulances, all licensed at the paramedic level, and we also um, have the ability, and we're one of the first departments in the state, to have both our engines out of each uh, station licensed at the paramedic level. And, and that sometimes uh, goes unnoticed, and it really shouldn't because the men and women who staffed us for a number of years, they were trained to do a job, but we didn't have the ability uh, during that time to get them the supplies and equipment to uh, actually perform their paramedic level uh, training. So it was back in April 1st of 2011 that we finally did that. And that has been a tremendous success and asset. In terms of Cooley Dick, um, Cooley Dickinson throughout the years has been a great partner. Um, in terms of just collaboration from helping build the service, having them in our backyard to support us in the ongoing train the continual training. Um, we meet with them uh, almost on a monthly basis. Uh, to follow up on ambulance directors' notes and meetings, um, working with Dr. Conway's staff, um, Jen DeRosic and her staff as well, uh, have been a huge asset to uh, our service. Um, so, you know, going forward, you know, we want to thank uh, Mary Ann Labarge and all the city council here today, uh, Mayor Narkowitz, and especially, obviously, Cooley Dick. Um, thank you for your ongoing continued support. 
you know, to wrap things up for us. We do have an ambulance here. Uh, it is available. We have the doors opened up so people can see um, what we have in terms of equipment and resources. And just a quick show and tell if anyone is interested in that. So thank you very much for inviting us and enjoy the afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, another dignitary is currently at the table signing. Uh, Council Ryan O'Donnell from the uh, board of three. And then the last dignitary I'm going to introduce is the next speaker. So uh, the, that is Marilyn Richards. Actually, I'm sorry, I would like to say thank you, first of all, to Patty Shaughnessy for amplifying my mm -hmm. voices. <laughs> she's in the, she said she's in charge of the on off button for the VHS, and she's got to get across the that. She was going to do face painting, but I said no. <laughs> I, I have only so much dignity left to give up. So. Um, Marilyn Richards, former Ward 3 City Councilor, um, um, and much more than that, obviously, and her affiliation with uh, Cooley Dickinson is probably known to most of you, but uh, she preceded Ryan by some some period of time. Uh, Marilyn and I did get to serve together. <laughs> she, and and then I do miss her, her voice and her, her steadiness in the council, um, but I'm sure you'll appreciate it as she comes up to speak to you right now. Thank <laughs> you. 